This is Rock Slapping Champions. Player 1, playing Vorzoon. We have Typhoon. And player 2, playing Swan. We have Dark Steve. So let's have a look at the masteries while the players get set up. Vorzoon is a level 739 Ascension Commander, and they have their mastery split among all their mastery points over here. You can see the allocations. Now, personally, I prefer to go for the Black Hole Duration Mastery. The Black Hole Duration does allow you to deal with attack waves very efficiently by just completely disabling the attack wave. The Dark Pylon range is usually useful if you want to try and cheese certain missions, and if you are using very very specific kind of builds, like Dark Archons for example, if you're going for a mass Dark Archon build, Dark Pylon Rage Mastery does help in helping your units increase their energy regeneration while they're clocked up around the pylon. And for these masteries here, the general recommendation now, or at least the new recommendations, is to go for the Shadow Guard Duration Mastery and the Initial Spear for Dune Mastery here. And the reasoning behind that is that it allows for Vorzun's early game to be a little bit strengthened because now she will have access to a bunch of Dark Templars which can deal with early siege or early mission objectives until she gets out her full-fledged army. Now for Swan, on the other hand, Swan is a non-mastery, non-sentient level commander. And I had to look at the loading screen, he's level 14, so he does have access to all his kit. I think the only thing he doesn't have access to is level 15 talent, which I believe increases his H the HP of his units by 20% or something like that. And the other, the other thing that he does not have is the Concentrated Beam Mastery, which means that he doesn't have access to the increased damage that the Concentrated Beam has to offer, which means that it will be a little bit more difficult for him to deal with the train escorts if he's actually choosing to do that. So one way you can play Swan on this mission is to use your Concentrated Beam and your Pulse Cannon to deal with the train escorts as soon as they spawn, which, it, which clears out the train and makes it much more vulnerable for you, and make sure that your army does not take damage to the units that are around that train escort, so it does make it a little bit nice. So we have Ver Vorzun here using her Shadow Guard to clear the expansions, and both the expansions are, are clear, and this is ready for Swan, but Swan has not actually taken this expansion. He does have a, an SCB moving along the way, but I do not know, it, it, usually the Swan build order will require a multi-build for Swan so he can get his, get his command center out as quickly as possible. There's an SCB that is just chilling over here, still no command center, and the Shadow Guard now is going to be dealing with the Vultures, but we have a Swan combat drop as well that gets used. Now the Shadow Guard will need to be thrown away because it's, it's, it's near the end of its time anyway, so they're going to end up warping away. But that one combat drop was not really used very efficiently, and there's one random Goliath right now for Swan as well, added to the mix. But again, no command center yet for Swan. What is Swan producing right now? Swan is producing nothing. What is... Swan has some AP. Okay, so now he's actually put down his command center, and he's not fast building his command center, which is going to slow him down, and Swan needs a command center as quickly as possible to get his economy up and running as quickly as possible as well. We do have a laser drill that is slowly starting to aggro some of these units, but this is going to be a mech Terran composition, and that one Goliath is also going to end up getting picked off very quickly here. And yeah, one of the other things that does make it a little bit more difficult for Swan is the fact that he's he does not have the Vespine Drone Mastery, and it looks like he's put Vespine Harvesters on pretty much all of the gases that are available here, which is, again, okay, but Swan is not really that gas deprived at the... He's a commander that would probably better be better off spending the minerals on getting a command center out. So that has definitely slowed Swan down a little bit. We have one more Goliath added to the mix here, and this is why getting the Shadow Guard does help, because now Vorzun can drop a Shadow Guard to be able to handle this train. And Swan looks like he is re-targeting re on that laser drill, which is also re... God, the laser drill is re aggroing which means that he's losing out on a little bit of potential DPS. We do have a bunch of stalkers that have been warped in for Vorazun, so this is going to be Vorazun's early game solution to deal with these trains, and this train will, I think, go down. But now, 
there is an attack wave on the way and there are a bunch of vultures that are just standing over here and yeah, they're gonna start attacking Swan's laser drill and this might be somewhat problematic. Swan has chosen to re-add target the laser drill onto this attack wave. This laser drill is not gonna be enough and there's one random goliath over here. The SCV gets pulled off just at the last second as it was trying to repair the goliath but now Vorzun has warped in her shadow guard and that shadow guard will deal with the attack wave and the second attack wave as well and that train has gone down and with the help of the goliaths and the few stalkers that are in position this command center is done but there is nothing mining over here this scv is just chilling right now not really doing anything we have a bunch of siege tanks added for swan as well so these siege tanks are gonna be good in getting a little bit of damage output and Swan's general strategy here is to go for a very large chunk of siege tanks. We can see the Shadow Guard is just being thrown into the enemy camps and small enemy bases just to get a little bit of value for the duration of the Shadow Guard. And we have another laser drill that's going to end up retargeting this one missile turret. The missile turret will end up going down as well. And now there is finally Swan starting to mine from their expansion. So the SCB gets remo removed on onto these little Vespine geysers, which I guess is good because Swan does need a little bit of gas and not the minerals that he's currently short of right now. But yes, yeah, Swan has warped in Vorzun has warped in a Dark Pylon. Dark Pylon range, as you can see, is kind of good. You do have a little bit more cover for your Dark Pylon, but personally, I find that the Black Hole Duration Mastery is a lot better. Now, the one thing that you can see is that Swan does get a little bit of value for the Dark Pylon range, because his Siege Tanks, as you can see, do have extra attack damage added to their weapons as they are cloaked at the moment but you can see the swan is actually warping swan is producing a bunch of floors here which is probably not the most ideal scenario there are a bunch of rates that are dealing some damage to swan siege tanks because these rates are cloaked and they get the cloak pretty much instantly which is one of the things that makes it a little bit annoying there's no detection right now so these units will have to move out of the way but the one thing that is somewhat problematic is that these rates do have cloak and they get their cloak right at the start of the game so that is very very annoying but yeah i want to talk about swan's usage of thors here because swan is producing it looks like swan wants to produce a bunch of thors which is i guess okay but thors are not really that great you are dealing with a ground composition this is just a well mostly a ground composition at least this is just a perfect this is a perfect scenario for going for just mass siege tanks. Just put in a, just keep making siege tanks, maxing out on siege tanks, and building a bunch of Hercules, and you can deal a lot of damage to the trains and just completely destroy the attack waves. But over here we have a bunch of racers that are just harassing these units right now. There is no detection. We have a few oracles now warped in for Vorzun, and Vorzun now will be able to clean out. I'm not sure why Vorzun is trying to run away from this attack wave but again there are there, these rays are causing so much problems to swan and swan is actually taking a lot of damage five of those goliaths have already died and this one thor as well just taking so much damage from those rays and there is no detection right now for swan swan is finally has finally produced one of these science vessels and now he's gonna finally blast this annoying little wraith out of the sky so Vorzun has also managed to re-rally our army to that one wraith, but that problem has been solved right now. This Thor will need to be repaired because this Thor is not going to take, be able to take any damage from the escort waves. But as you can see, Swan has not really used his cooldowns for dealing with the attack wave at all. So these, this is going to be very, very difficult. You can see now this is why Black Hole is really nice. Just getting all of Amon's units clumped up into the Black Hole would have made it so much easier. But instead, these units are going to start teaching up and going to start attacking Swan's army. Now, the good thing is Vorzun does warp in a long, a large ranged Dark Pylon. So that does make Swan's army cloaked, which means that Swan will be able to take a little bit less damage from the escort wave here. This is what random SCV just randomly building on this bunker, but this bunker will not end up completing, I do not think. And that is that train done. There is a random hybrid here, and you can see that Vorzun has already put down a bunch of cannons on the high ground here. Now remember that you are dealing with a Terran composition, which means that on this map, Terran will be more than happy to nuke you. So you should be building static defense and a way of handling the ghosts on this mission. This is one of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of people doing is that you ignore the fact that you are playing up against Terran. And because you are playing up against Terran, you will start to get nuked. And you can see over here, this is completely undefended. This is Swan's responsibility and he should and he has actually more than enough static defense to be able to deal with that kind of 
defense, so he, he should be having some kind of static defense there. There are more a bunch of Thors here for Swan. Swan just wants to go for the mass Thor build, and again, Thors, to be honest, I find the Thors really underwhelming even when you are at mastery level. I don't find them to be very useful. And now we have a combat drop. Swan wants to go and get this train, and the combat drop actually ends up stunning the units inside the bunker, which is kind of funny. But now we have the double train wave, and this double train wave is also a double trouble wave because there is very, very strong, there are very strong set of escorts are accompanying those waves. We have a recall from Vorzun from the Dark Pylon and now they have to try or at least Vorzun has to try and engage this while Swan's army is slowly trudging across the map trying to make their way towards the objective and this is going to be very very challenging for Swan. So Swan already has one Thor in the position. He should probably be clumping up his army because that one Thor is very very vulnerable right now to a large chunk of the units. Here we do have a dark pylon that gets warped in and now we have a time stop and this time stop is somewhat inconveniently timed for swan because swan is not into okay never mind well i was gonna say that swan could actually use that time stop duration to clear out the escort wave but it looks like he's just taking that time stop to deal damage to the train and he's gonna eventually clean out that train but as you can see this escort is going to be really really massive there are a bunch of units over here these battle cruisers are just casting yamatakans right on top of these thors and already two of these thors have gone and third thor also gets cleaned up the other ones do get emergency recall back to the nexus so they are coming back and they're making a conga line right there with zero hp left on these thors these thors are already sitting at one hp and these thors are going to go down by the hybrid dominator uh, the hybrid destroyers lifty move and now these battle cruisers are right on top of swan's army and they are just going to end up wiping out pretty much all these thors that swan has Pretty much invested all of its resources in. All these Thors have gone down now. And uh, one more Thor as well is probably going to end up getting cleaned up as soon as this one Thor goes down. And now there are nuclear launches to add insult to injury, to add salt into the wounds of Swan. There are two nukes right on top of his base here. And these nukes are probably going to end up contacting his base. That's nuke number one. And that is nuke number two. And that Thor also ends up getting caught up by that one nuke. That is just completely a lot of carnage right now for Swan. Swan on the back foot. And finally, I think all the enemy units have been cleared. What are the casualties right now in that engage? There were 14. It looks like 44, but I'm pretty sure that is 14 Thors. Three siege tanks, one size vessel, and a bunch of reactors have gone down, and these things are also on fire. On SCV, there is another nuke right on top of Swan's base. Is Swan going to end up getting nuked again? There is no detection here for Vorazun. I don't know where Vorazun's detection is. Oh, I think she might have lost her detection. So that nuke is also going to end up going down right on top of Swan's base, right there. All his factories, all his starports, everything has gone down right now for Swan. Swan is really, really salty right now. And we also have another nuke right on top of this. Is there another nuke here? That was not the ghost I was casting the nuke, that was the ghost that dropped the other one, so there is a nuke right on top of Swan's base now, and Swan has lost a lot of SCVs. Vorzun has to go and deal with the strange, because this escort as well is really really nasty, and finally that ghost comes out of cloak, because he runs out of energy, and Swan uses a combat drop to end that ghost's career as a ghost. Now, the other thing I've also noticed is that this is not a wise idea when you're playing up against Terran, because sometimes the ghost will come from on the low ground and drop a nuke on the high ground because they do have global vision so that is probably not a wise idea but i don't I, i'm not sure what is going to happen i don't know if the ghost will end up nuking this 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 side but yeah do not build your do not build your structures when you're playing up against Terran on the high ground here because if the ghost sees that it'll just drop a nuke right on top so Vorzun is now has cleared the train and Vorzun now is in position to deal with this next attack wave and this is why black hole is really really nice so there's a little bit of an archon toilet that is here but and the Vorzun ends up stealing that one Malakris as well so you can see the Vorzun has actually added some dark archons to the mix there's an irradiate here which has killed off some of these dark templars but Vorzun has added a a few Dark Archons in the mix, so the is going to start stealing some of Amon's Battle Cruisers. Now, unfortunately, even though Vorzun has attack upgrades, she has Protoss attack upgrades, which means that when she steals these Battle Cruisers, they are basically going to lose all their upgrades, and they're going to be back to 0, 0, 0, which is generally the reason why I do not like Dark Archons very much. I guess if you are playing up against a Protoss composition and you end up stealing carriers and Tempests and stuff, you might be able to get away with it, but when you're stealing... 
when, you, when you're stealing Zerg units or when you're stealing Terran units, you don't really get that kind of value that you would normally get here. There is another nuke here and Vorzuth is trying to help her ally out. She's already put down a bunch of cannons. These pylons, so unfortunately, are going to end up going down to that one nuke. And these cannons are going to be undefended and they are not going to have... They are going to be unpowered as well. Swan has, I believe, cleaned up the science vessel here. So there are a few more. There's one random ghost here that's still harassing that that ramp but as soon as those cannons come up like those is pretty much gone there is now a time stop here swan again sees the time stop not really doing anything decides to attack the train with the time stop active which is again not very effective use of the time stop finally realizes that he can go and he can start cleaning this up but actually starts steps forward ends up re aggroing the train and not really doing what he would need to do which is clear the escort wave here so now this escort wave is just gonna come up right on top of his army again once siege tank goes down more yamato cannons right on top of his army lots of goliaths going down right now swan does have a reasonable chunk of army right now so he might should he might be able to clean up this escort wave and remember this escort wave is not really that strong Shiv the swan has the level one attack upgrades for his for his for his mech units and he does have the laser drill as well laser drill level one he has not picked up a pulse cannon upgrade yet for his he's not even researching that which is very very surprising because that pulse cannon is really useful there is a massive attack wave over here but Vorzun is going to end up recalling her army and will end up deleting pretty much the entire chunk of this attack wave. Swan is where? Swan wants to try and engage this attack wave, but he's ignoring the fact that there are a bunch of hybrids on the low ground that are trying to attack some of the static defense this spot here. But again, we have three, we have finally four cannons left, and they are all in position now to defend Swan against the onslaught of Avon's army. Swan has not actually rebuilt any more of his factories. He is sitting at he has one factory here. Okay, there's the other factory that he has rebuilt. But does he have a starport? He does not have a starport, which means he does not have detection. And again, detection is really, really important. This is the last bonus train. This bonus train should go down. Borzu's army is absolutely massive right now. And yeah, I think this game is pretty much done. This is going to be the bonus train completed. One more train wave to get cleared. And then this is going to be it. Yeah, these, these battle cruisers are... They're, they're good for the Yamato cannons, I guess, but I'm not really much of a fan of it. You see there's a massive attack wave here. I don't know if Warzone wants to engage this. Swan wants to engage this. I'm not sure if this is a wise idea. And again, that one Thor jumps in, gets Yamato right in the face with a bunch of Amon's battle cruisers, and Amon is just going to end up cleaning up Swan's army right there. And that is the end of Swan's army again, because Swan has chosen to... He had Concentrated Beam as well, which is mind-boggling here. He had Concentrated Beam available, did not research Pulse Cannon, which is also very problematic for Swan. Swan not relying on his Laser Drill, which gives him a significant power advantage in the game, and it allows him to deal with the attack waves as well. But Vorzun is going to end up clearing out the stream without any issues, as long as Vorzun ends up focusing down the stream. And yeah, Vorzun has realized that she cannot take on that army, I don't think, face-to-face. -face. She does have Time Stop available, so it doesn't really matter. This is going to be the last stream. And just to add insult to injury, there are a few more nukes that are going to be dropped all right on top of swan's army but there is a there is a time stop that gets used and that gets the, the ghost to decloak and swan's laser drill aggroes the ghost and kills it off but that is pretty much all the trains done swan completely losing his army heavy losses on his on his part but those are all the trains done and that is gg